In this video, I'm going to show you the importance of using try catch in your code, because if you get an exception thrown, maybe from your code, maybe from a library code, maybe from a third party service you're using, it will crash your application. So you need to be able to handle this. So when something does go wrong and it will, you can handle it and take the necessary steps that you want to happen with your application. Maybe show it's an error and please try again later, but rather you're dealing with it when someone else dealing with it for you. If that sounds interesting to you, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe below so you get notified every time I post a video and go live. How I want to show this to you is I want to take a really simple example using Express.js. If we go to the Express.js website and they've actually got a hello world example and I think that's a pretty good example to show you the importance of try catches and exceptions. So in the hello world example I'm just going to copy this code and paste it into our server.js file. I want to hit save. Let's just give that a run and make sure it's okay. So I'm just going to say node server.js. So if we go to localhost port 3000 in the browser, we can see we've got hello world. And that's their example from their documentation. So I'm actually going to change this. And I want to make a HTTP request to GitHub's API. And you'll understand why I'm using this example later on. What we need to do is stop the application and we're going to install Axios, which is a HTTP library for us to make requests. So let's just install npm install Axios. Now that's installed, we can require it in our application. So we can say const Axios and we'll require Axios. And so now we've got that, we can make a request to GitHub's API by saying constant response equals Axios get. Copilot's done a pretty good job, but I'm going to change the username to be my username. And if I grab this URL, and put it in the browser, you will see it displays my information in the browser. So you can see this is all my public information on GitHub. So we're expecting to see the same in our app. So I'm gonna change the response, or well, that will need to be an await. So we will need to make this an async function. And then the data that we return is gonna be response.data. So if I hit save, let's run the application again and let's visit this URL localhost 3000 on our application and we get the data that we saw directly from GitHub API. So we're kind of piping it through. And the reasons why you want to do this is you might want to remap the data, do some other clever stuff with it. But in this example, we're just going to kind of pipe it straight through. Actually, you know what? Let's do something a bit smarter so we can see something change. So let's do something like, for example, we will say we only want the login details and the URL of the profile. So in this case, let's make a new object and this could be the username and then it would be response data dot login. And then the other item we will want is, let's say we will take the URL. So we could say profile, for example, and it would be response data dot HTML URL. And so now if we stop and start the application, there are tools you can use. So you don't have to manually stop and start it. And we refresh this, we will see two bits of data pulled out. So this is the full GitHub API, and this is the two um, data fields that we've pulled out. Just so you can see there's a difference. So what happens now is if we allow the user of the, our app to pass in the username. So I've hard coded Eddie Jowd, and we could put it in as a get variable in the top, you know, question mark or forward slash uh, username and Eddie Jowd, therefore it could be changed to, to Sarah or to your username. But I'm just gonna keep it hard coded for now. But the point I'm trying to make is what happens if they type it in wrong? Let's have a look. So if we go to the GitHub API and let's just remove at the end of my username and it should throw an error. So we get from GitHub message not found. But if we go to our app and do the same, and if you notice when we run our app, it stays running so we can keep hitting our API over and over again. But let me stop and start the app to reload the changes. And when we hit now localhost 3000 on the route, so nothing added to the path, it's gonna try and make a request to GitHub with an incorrect username, so without the E. So if I refresh our app, it breaks, right? It doesn't say message not found. We actually get a broken app. So let's look at the terminal and you can see we've got a whole load of exception and data outputted into the console and the app has stopped. So now if someone inputs the correct username, the app's not gonna work because the app is not running. An exception has been thrown and an app has crashed. So we really wanna handle this a lot better because they might type in an incorrect username and think, 
oh, I typed it in wrong. Let me try, try again and type it in correctly this time. But now it wouldn't work. The app, if I refresh it, no matter how many times I refresh it, the app is not running. So we can solve this quite easily and I'm gonna show you how. What we can do is we can wrap this in a try catch. So we could say something like this. So we're gonna try this request. If it doesn't work, let's catch the uh, exception and then we can do something else. And what we can do here is we could actually change the data that we want displayed. So let me simplify this again now and I will just return the response.data. In fact, let's make a new variable, let's call it data. And data is gonna be equal to an object and then we're gonna create in the try, we are gonna create the response as we did before. Let me make it correct for now. So I wanna show it to you working and show it to you working a different way. So now we've got it kind of back to what it was. Let me hide the sidebar, you don't need this. Gives a bit more real estate. So we'll say constant response and then we'll say data equals response.data and what we'll send back to the browser will be data. And then in the catch, what we want to do is say data and we can create a new object here and we can say data and we can have it you can put whatever you want in here but let's just say message user not found there we go so let's save that so let me just recap what we've done so we've created a new variable uh, called data and we're going to still make the same request i have put the correct username on there now to show it working and then i'll break it again to show it to you still working and we're going to take the data from the response into the data variable and pass it back but if there is an exception we're going to catch it and we're going to pass back message user not found and it's different to the github user not found message. So if I show you here, this is the GitHub one. It does look different. It got a documentation URL and you could add things like that if you wanted. Let me start this up and try again. So now this is stuck running. This app is running and then refresh the page. And you can see we've got all the data from GitHub because I removed the, the manual mapping that we did just to keep it simple for now. So we've got all the data back. So it is working. So let me break it. So I've hit save. Let me stop the application and start it again because we haven't, like I said, we haven't got the node more or anything like that reloading our application on changes. So let's run it again. And remember, we have got the incorrect URL. And this broke our application last time. And we got just nothing was displayed in the browser because it properly crashed our application. If I hit refresh, now you'll see it says message, user not found. Different to GitHub's one, we're not piping it through, but we have actually caught that and we have actually said user not found with not in capitals. And our app is still running. Yes, I have hard coded the incorrect user, so I would have to stop and start the application again to show it with um, a correct user, but you've seen that already. But my point is our app is still running, so I can refresh this and refresh it again and the app is still running it hasn't crashed so remember it's really important to do a try catch and there are other things you can do with try catch like with final so if you wanted something to happen every time if it was successful or not successful you could also do that for example let me show you so in the final which would run every time if it's successful in the try or it was a failure and it went into the catch we could then say data equals so there's different ways you could do this, but we could spread the existing data and then also add an extra property on the object. We could say docs, and then we could get this from um, GitHub docs. So I'm gonna grab the, the URL that GitHub supplies, and I wanna pass it back on every result, good or bad. So we're gonna paste that in now. And it could be your docs, it could be your, a link to your website, it could be anything. So if I hit save, and if I stop and start the application, run the application, and so we'll start off with the incorrect user. So if I refresh it, you see it says user not found, and it also on the finally appends the documentation to GitHub. But let me make it correct now and pass and you'll see that I haven't added this URL to the try and the catch. It's happening to both of them by using the final, or finally, I should say. And if I run the application again, it is running. I refresh the page, we should see my user information and still this is appended at the end. Refresh it, we've got all this information from GitHub and right at the end, we've still got docs and that same URL. So you have got finally that you can use, which is really useful and awesome, especially if you're doing loaders in the front end, because you can use this for the front end as well. If you're doing loaders in the front end, and it might be successful or unsuccessful, you might want to um, manage the way the progress bar or the skeleton load or whatever it is in the finally. Let me know in the comments below what you're gonna use try catch for and if you do use it and, and what you use for and do you use finally as well. 
I look forward to geeking out with you in the Eddie Hub Discord between videos and live streams. Links in the description below.